Um, yeah, so, um, well, maybe, I don't know if there are any questions before we begin. Um, remember, we have the quiz today at the end of class, uh, like during the last 30 minutes of classes, but I'll say more about it once we get closer to that part. But yeah, maybe if there are any questions first. Everything going well? Well. Uh, yeah, so my idea is going to be, yeah, you'll end up leaving soon uh, to take the quiz, correct? Yes. I'll explain like the, the instructions like once we get closer to the quiz, but yeah, like you we won't we will conclude the Zoom meeting like 30 minutes before like around what uh 2 30 basically. And uh, I will still have office hours at three, so I'll rejoin the, the Zoom meeting around three in case anyone wants to stop by uh to ask me something. But yeah, um if not um yeah. It is a uh, time, it will be, I'll give you like 20, it's only uh, at the end, I decided to do like three short limit questions, but uh, I'm giving you 20 minutes for that. And then I'll give you like 10 or 15, uh, like 15 minutes to take pictures of your work and upload it to Canvas. Yeah, so so it's really, like uh, it's 20 minutes for the quiz itself, but like 15 for uploading everything. So. So yeah, you don't have to worry while you're taking the quiz about uh, like, you know, res saving time for the upload. The upload is kind of like a separate part, part of, of everything. Okay, let me share my iPad if that sounds, if that is okay. Okay, so um, uh, what we were doing yesterday uh, was talking about, I'll, by the way, I'll probably try to find like a, a interesting YouTube video or something like that for you to watch over the weekend. I'll give you like an, uh, like an extra point or so for doing that, um, just for you to find like, just to give you some something alternative uh, about like applications of calculus or things like that, could, which could be interesting. So yeah, I'll try. I have a good list of YouTube videos, uh, so I'll try to suggest one or two uh, for you uh, over the weekend. So yesterday, what we were doing was talking about limits. Um, we kind of worked a couple of examples um, to get like a, a basic intuition of how they're supposed to, uh, to behave. Um, in all the examples we were doing, like. Uh, you know, uh, I, I gave you examples first, which are most of the time were interesting. By interesting, I mean that if you try to just plug in the value of X with the value that it is approaching, you get like zero over zero, right? So most of the interesting limits that we will do in this course, like they look like zero over zero. If you just try to plug it, replace X directly with, with the value. So the, the philosophy of, of all these limits questions is to always like do some sort of like algebraic manipulation first with the expression you were given so that it re reaches like a stage where you can actually um, do kind of like a substitution. Okay, so like most of the limits, they always involve some sort of like algebraic trick to, to rewrite the expression you care about into a format that is convenient, okay? But uh, so that may give you like an idea that maybe um, the limit, um, these limits always exist, but actually it is not necessarily the case that a limit always exists. So a very easy way to come up with uh, cases where that doesn't happen is uh, with this stuff about one-sided limits. So let me try to explain what I mean by one-sided limits and you'll see um, what I mean. So. So here's an example. I'll, I'll, I'll draw the graph of the function first uh, so that it's easier to see this. So 
So let's say I give you this graph. Here's one, here's two. Okay, so what's happening here? So this funk, this is a graph of, uh, I mean, I should probably have used the same color. I'll change the color. So what, let, this is representing a function y equals f of x. Uh, maybe you have seen this in the past, but this is one of these functions that really is not given by a single formula. It kind of is given in, in two pieces. Um, so f of x here. So if you think about it, it takes the value one. It is taking the value one. Every, every time uh, the value for x is less than one. So you would write one if x is less than one. And it takes the value two, right? If uh, whenever x is greater or equal to one, oops. Okay, so first of all, is this making sense? Like the definition of this function? Uh, I I'm just checking if you had seen like functions defined in this way before. Um, So the idea of a limit, again, like you should think of a limit, some sort of like um, a prediction of how the function is behaving as you take values of x closer and closer to the, the value that you care about. So imagine someone asks you that you want to study the limit as x, like the interesting value of x in this example is one, because that's where like we change the definition of the function, right? Like the function takes different formulas based on the value x equals one. So let's say you want to study the limit as x approaches one of f of x, right? Uh, so uh, what what does that mean? Well, so it means that like, I can draw some uh, to make this a little bit more like, like an animation. You have to imagine that like, so, you have to, you kind of are studying a, a, this function. So you can imagine that it, this function is like the graph is some sort of road you're walking along, right? And you're, um, the value of the function is kind of like the height of the road, right? Above uh, sea level, for example. So if you, you see, if you, are, if you are walking on values of X, which are bigger than one, right? You would say that your height is two, right? But if you were walking of, um, for um, along values of x, which are less than one, right? Uh, you would say that your height is one. And like if in this animation, if you notice what I'm doing, I'm kind of walking towards the value x equals one, because that's kind of like what's supposed to happen on a limit, right? On a limit, um, you're kind of approaching the value that you care about. So here I'm trying to draw like pictures where you're walking towards one, okay? So, what I'm trying to say is that kind of what you would like to say is that this limit is actually two or one, but depending on which side you are, uh, are approaching uh, the value of X equals one. Okay, so kind of, if you, there's not like a single answer for this question, like it's rather more like two different answers, if that makes sense. So let me write this. Um, uh, depends on whether you are approaching x equals one from the left or from the right. Is that making sense? So the easiest way to deal with these situations is kind of to um, kind of refine or like um, give more details on, on what you mean by limit. So there is this one-sided limit 
which uh so here's like where these one-sided limits come in so there's a one-sided limit called um limit as x approaching a plus of f of x and so what does this plus mean here let me uh underlie uh let me put a different color so the plus means that you're moving uh with values that are bigger or plus think think of the plus as being to the right so this is like um the limit of the function when you consider uh, values to the right of A. So in our example, uh, this, if I choose A to be one, because that's where I'm basing our example, right? This means like how is the function behaving when you're choosing values to uh, of X to the right of one. And if you go back to our uh, sketch of the graph, when x is to the right of one, um, x, uh, the value of the function was always two. So this limit should be two. Is that making sense? Okay, and then, uh, there's like a, an, an analogous like story, but when you are approaching from the left and kind of you think of the uh, left being like with the negative values. So there's like another one-sided limit. Which is the limit as X approaches a from the left. So this means the limit of the function when you consider To the, to the left, sorry. Oops. Is that making sense? So in our example, um, the limit as X approaches one from the left would be what? Would be uh, one, right? Okay, let me stop here just to make sure there are any questions so far so good. Uh, let me know uh, how safe everything is. Is that making sense or not? Okay, I'll give you give you a minute or so to finish copying things. Okay, so 
um, what's the conclu I mean, what's the basic um, decision when you see these situations? Well, when this happens, basically, you want to say something like these in two, two one-sided limits exist in this example, but the total limit will we will say it does not exist because um, the one-sided limits did not agree. So you should actually think that a limit computation is as, uh, secretly two one-sided limits, and if they happen to coincide, then actually that's when the limit does exist. So this is kind of like the basic um, the definition or like theorem, whatever you want to call this. Like so. So the remark uh, is that the limit uh, of x approaches a oops, of f of x only exists when the two one-sided limits agree. I'll give you the same answer when the two agree. Okay, so this is a very useful criteria. I mean, you'll see a typical question about limits is like to determine whether a limit exists or not. And if you think that a limit shouldn't exist, one useful strategy is to check whether the one-sided limits disagree. That happens many times whenever like the function is given by two different rules and or formulas. Like, because if you look at this example, the, fun the function was given by two formulas, right? Uh, depending on the value of x. So that's um, that's one way to do, do this. Is that making sense so far so good? Any questions about this? Okay, now let's do something more uh, fun. Um, if this is making sense up to this point, and this is like a more like the next example will be more like a classical exam type, exam type problem. This is like a very traditional problem you tend to ask um, uh, here for for these sort of things. So let me see if I can show you first like the algebra to kind of motivate this. Okay. So. Uh, X. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm going to give you a formula. Uh, I'm going to give you a function, which is the following. Oops. Okay. So, um, so this for formula, when x is greater than two, right, uh, is going to be minus x squared plus six. So if you remember minus x squared plus six, is kind of like the equation of a parabola. Uh, at this point, like, I mean, I guess knowing the graph kind of work, uh, is useful, but it's not like a super essential, but it is uh, nice to have it around. And then what I'm going to do, do is define a slider on GeoGebra. Okay. Okay. So I define, I don't know if you see it here, which is like uh, called M. Yes. Oh, okay. Let me, I don't like where it was placed. So I'll put it in there. Okay. Now it looks better. So I'm, I'm going to define a, a slider on GeoGebra. And I'm going to um, make another definition, which is like if x is less than two, I'm going to use an x uh, 
plus uh, two. Okay, so I'm defining a function which is given by these two different um, formulas, if that makes sense. Okay, and if you see, like, if, as as I change the value. I don't know if everyone sees like I'm uh, M. I'm using the letter M because that's usually the letter for the slope, right? So this is like the equation of a line. So it's like M X plus B. B is I'm always keeping it uh, fixed equal to two, right? Um. So in this example, what I'm doing is kind of modifying the value for M, if that makes sense. And um, you know, it looks like there will be a value for M, where they they kind of uh they kind of seem to touch, right? But at any other value for M, right? Like the two graphs do not match. Is that making sense? So a typical calculus question is kind of to determine the value for M where the where this limit will exist. So if you think about it, what's going to happen is that if you if you just choose a random value for M, Right, uh, this one-sided limit was a. By the way, yeah, let's let's try it out. Right, what's the one-sided limit for this function if you approach x from the uh, if you approach two from the right? What should the limit be if you approach two from the right? So you're moving along the the red curve, right? So what would you say the one-sided limit is? Yeah, it should just be two. Good. Um, so, but if you, from for the left, it depends on the value of M that you choose, right? This is what you see changing here. So there, like what we're going to try to find is the value for M for which the two one-sided limits agree, and that would make the limit uh, exist. Okay, so let me write that down on the tablet, but I just wanted to give you some intuition for what's going on. Like if you look at the, if you follow according to, to like this, like animation, it should be at m equals zero that they coincide, right? But it didn't have to be that way, right? In fact, like um, if I change, I mean, another, if I change the value for m slightly, uh, let's, let's use, uh, sorry, let's use a different value for b so that it's a little bit more interesting. So um, I'll do it with, with this value for, uh, with b. Okay, let me go back to the iPad. Okay, so this is like a more um, classic problem in calculus. So. so yeah, so here's an ex uh, an example, another example. So f of x is now going to be um, minus x squared plus six if x is greater or equal to two. And um, mx plus one, uh, if x is less than two, okay? So the question, the typical question here in this case is uh, determine the value for m of m for which the limit as x approaches two of f of x exists. Okay. Uh, so again, uh, in these problems, for if you want the limit to exist. What that means is that you want the the one sided limits to agree. So we need the 
one sided limits to agree. So let me let me start with the one from the right. Right. Uh, since you're choosing values of two, which are uh, which since you're using values which are bigger than two, that means that you can use the first definition for the formula of act uh, of the function. Right. And remember, this is kind of like a polynomial. So I told you yesterday for polynomials, you can just um, you can just substitute x with the value that you're given. So it gives you minus four plus six, and that's how you end up with two. So far, so good. Any questions about this? Still making sense? Okay. And then um, we need um, uh, the other one sided limit. And again, what that means is that you can, re since now you're choosing values of x, which are less than two, you can replace it with the second formula that I gave you, which is mx plus one. And that just, again, you re you can replace um, x with two because it's like a uh, polynomial or a straight line. So you get two m plus one. Okay, and so what that means is that this gives you an equation, like, you know, we need the agreement of these two numbers, so that gives you like the, the equation that it will allow you to find the, the value of M. So we need, Right, so this is to m equals one or m equals one half, which is what we saw on algebra uh, after I changed the, the equation of the line to mx plus one, okay? Is that making sense? Any questions about this so far so good? Okay, so let me um the next one uh just to do one more before switching to a different topic. Let's do uh this example. Because it's just like a good excuse to see whether you remember too many properties about absolute value. So determine, so here's another example.
And if, if this notation, right, remember this vertical line notation here, uh, x minus one vertical lines is the absolute value, right? So uh, let me give, I mean, maybe not everyone remembers absolute value, so I'll remind you what absolute value was. But let me give you, um, but if I say it right now, then I cannot, I'm spoiling, spoiling it for you because I would be giving you the answer. So let me give you like two, two, three minutes to think about this one and then we'll discuss it together and then we can go over the basics of absolute value, if that makes sense. So let's meet, I mean, let's discuss this around 135 just to um, have this, uh, between all of us. Uh, okay, uh, I don't know. Uh, were you able, anyone was able to think about this? What what were you, the 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 decision you got to? Okay, so um, can you hear mm -hmm. me? Yeah, I could. I can. Okay. Okay. So the way I kind of thought of it is like, um, an absolute value is is symmetrical on both sides. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. Um, the expression inside of the absolute value line, x minus, mm -hmm. when you plug in one, it gives you zero. So that would be the center of like the absolute value, uh, like uh, equation. Mm -hmm. So then all the values to the left, I applied um a negative towards it because if you make it negative, then it's going to be positive, and then all right. the ones I made it positive. Okay. Yes, you are on the right. Perfect. Yes. Uh. The the first thing, and this is always what will happen whenever you have like an absolute value in these calc problems, is that absolute value is secretly like a function that's defined in pieces. Okay, so that was basically the big observation of this problem. So absolute value is kind of written as a single thing, but it actually signifies two two quantities. So let's think about what absolute value. So what it like just like as a refresh a rem, um remark or a reminder uh, what is absolute value of some number Oops. okay this is a terrible uh, thing parenthesis symbol okay so if the number happens to be non-negative it just returns the same number right Right, so for example, the absolute value of three is three, the absolute value of zero is actually zero, the absolute value of 10 is 10, right? So whenever the number you put inside the absolute value is already negative and positive or non-negative, it, it just gives you the same number back. But the absolute value, if the number that you fit into it is, um, is negative, then you have to think that the absolute value wants to return like a positive value all the time, okay? So if you're feeding into the absolute value of something negative, it already comes with a minus sign. So you need to put another minus sign in front of it to, to get rid of it. So just to make this very concrete, what's the absolute value of minus three? Um, well, that's, it should be three, but you should think in, for, in terms of the formula, you should think of this as minus minus three, because like, you know, basically you want to kill the minus that the number already comes with. So for that, you just have to put a, another minus in front of it. 
okay? Or like an absolute value of minus 10 uh, or negative 10 is minus minus 10 so that like the minus is canceled, so you get 10. So what I'm trying to say is that the absolute value of, of, of the number is minus the number if, he, if the number is negative. Is that making sense? Uh, questions about this so far so good? Let me just give you a second to copy this. So what's happening here, right? If I give you the absolute value of X minus one, Think of x minus one as our number, right? So if, if then if x minus one happens to be positive or non-negative, then you should get um you should just get x minus one. But if x minus one happens to be negative, right? then we have to put a minus in front of it. So what I'm trying, so that's basically how the splitting happens in this case, right? So the absolute value of x minus one, you don't touch it, you leave it alone if x minus one is positive and you multiply by negative one if that happens to be negative. Is that making sense uh, so far? Are there any questions about how I'm writing this expression for the absolute value? But uh, the thing to realize is that saying that X minus one should be greater or equal to zero is the same as saying that X has to be greater or equal to one. That's kind of the thing. And saying that X minus one should be negative is the same as saying that X should be less than one. So what I'm trying to say is that the breakdown, the, the place, the value of X where the, this formula for absolute value changes is exactly at X equals one which is good because that's precisely where we're analyzing the limit. Is that, is that making sense? Okay, cool. So now uh, we just look at the one-sided limits. I mean, again, whenever there's like a, a, a function that changes wherever you are trying to study the limit, you are supposed to um, look at the one-sided limits. So what is the one-sided limit? When you're choosing positive uh, values uh, to the right of one, um, let's see. Well, what that means is that you can use like the, uh, the first formula for the absolute value. So I can, uh, let me put here X minus one. So what that allows you just to replace, uh, X, remove the absolute values, the sign. And after that, it's very similar to what we were doing before, right? You just uh, use the difference of square formulas in the, um, in the denominator. So it gives you X minus one times X plus one. And so it gives you one over X plus one, and this is what, one half. Is that making sense? So the one-sided limit uh, uh, with positive um, from the right or positive value, uh, values greater than one is one half. Any questions up to this point? Again, like this uh, absolute value questions is also one of those classic top one problems. So it's very common. You'll probably 
still expect to see like a similar. I mean, there will always be like a problem that involves absolute value. It's a very common like thing to ask, especially really one this one sided limit stuff. Uh, so the thing is that you have to like the. The thing is, like, if to eliminate the absolute value, you have to re re recall the fact that this means that you're using values of x that are greater than one, and since x is greater than one, x minus one is a positive number, and since it is a positive number, the absolute value is supposed to leave it alone because the absolute value of a positive number is a positive number. If that makes sense. So that's why I was able to eliminate the, the absolute value symbol. Because like this is means like you're choosing X to be like 1.1 .1 or 1.11, 1.1111. So whenever you do X minus one, that, that is giving you a, a positive number. Is that okay? Um. And then for there's this other one-sided limit, which is limit as x approaches one from the left. And again, like if, uh, if you can always redo it here, if this is confusing, this is me. This means that you're choosing numbers which are slightly less than one. So you could be choosing 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, etc. So that is always like uh, you see. Um, Whenever you subtract one from that, you'll get like minus 0 0.1 or minus 0 0.11 or whatever. So that's why you you the absolute value will multiply it by negative to to cancel the negative sign it already comes with. And after that, it is kind of identical to what we were doing with the previous one. Uh, you still will do the difference of square formula. The only difference is that because of this minus sign, now you get minus one on the of the on the numerator. So this gives you negative one half. And so since the absolute value, since the one-sided limits are different, then the limit does not exist. Is that making sense? Any questions about this? Uh, okay, just to show you how it looks on algebra, it's always fun to see this. Um, so you can always plot on algebra this. Uh, functions like uh, just to and like you know again I don't okay like I actually don't think I show you how where to find this um so I should also before showing you this first like you uh, let me go to Firefox to to show you where you can download GeoGebra or not even download it you can also work on it online but you can go to Google and type GeoGebra so here it is like there's like I mean for example. Uh, if you don't, there, there's like an option to download it. If you look at app downloads, right? Uh, so you can download, that's what I have. Like I prefer to have like a version of my desktop. But if you don't want to, you can also like work with the, 
with the online tools so it doesn't require you to download it so you can i think let's see so like you can do it online and you can put f of x but it would be absolute value of x minus one divided by x it's very intuitive like how you would enter it okay so for example this is a graph this is the graph uh for x minus one absolute value of that divided by x squared minus uh, one so if you see it's very it kind of gives you like a better insight of what's going on when you're looking at a limit right if you remember we, we were looking at the limit of x approaches one so that means that you start ignoring everything else that is going with the function and you just zoom in close to one right so when as you go zoom in close and close to, closer and closer to one you see that the function is going to, um, yeah, this is where we had like one half, right? This is 0 0.5. It's going to 0 0.5 from the right, and it's going to minus 0 0.5 from the left, which is one half and minus one half. So that's why the one-sided limit uh, disagree. Is that making sense? So in fact, if you think about it as a road, uh, this is like a dangerous road, right? Because there's like a jump that happens at x equals one. And so next time what we will do, um, next week we'll talk about continuity and we will say that the function is not continued at x equals one because the function kind of, kind of jump there. Okay, so this is all related to, to this concept of continuity, which we will analyze next week. Okay. But uh, yeah, and then algebra, there are other things you can do here. Like it is like, no, let's say you can put like, if you enter limits, for example, there are like a lot of animations you can use um, just to work limits out, like, you know, to develop some intuition. So there's tons of resources on algebra that are already kind of made and they're all free. So it's kind of like um, nice to, to just play it and see what you find. So there's a bunch of examples here about one-sided limits or, or, or even limits and a bunch of other things. So yeah, it's a useful thing to have around. Okay, let me go. So I wanted to show you that. And now just to do a, a quick change of topics. So the last topic I wanted to talk about for today because we have the quiz um, in a couple of minutes is this stuff about um about limits at infinity So sometimes up to this point, we have been analyzing the limit as X approaches uh, a, a specific number, right? But there's an other, an, an, an alternative to that, which is to analyze the function as, uh, like for example, you just let X take longer and lo uh, larger and larger values, okay? So I think this is kind of actually better to show you first and judge or what I mean. Um, before uh, going this on the iPad. So for example, let's say I give you like a function like um, f of x equals um, x over x squared plus one. Okay. So this is kind of how the graph looks like, right? And so the the sort of limit that we're about to study is not one where you're looking at a at a fixed number like x approaches one or x approaches two, or minus one or minus two. It's rather where like you would say x approaches plus infinity, and by that I, you just mean that you let um, x take larger and larger values, 
right? And you try to analyze if there's like a behavior that happens with the function in that case. So remember like the function is this uh, brown curve. So what happen What is happening as you take larger and larger values of, of x, what can you say about the value of the function in this case? What do you think? It approaches zero, yeah. Uh, in fact, if you zoom out, it's kind of more clear. It, it is kind of almost indistinguishable from the x-axis, right? And the x-axis is when y equals zero. So what's happening here in a nutshell is that, I mean, think about it, um, you know, think about it in terms of like the algebra, right? When you have like a, a large number x, like a hundred, just think uh, even taking x to be 100, right? So if you take x to be 100, the numerator becomes 100, and then you're taking 100 square on the bottom, right? And 100 square, what is that? Like it's 10,000, right? So, and, and so you get like 10,001 here. So you're dividing the numerator by something that is a, a lot bigger, right? The denominator is a lot bigger. So the fraction itself should get small. And this gets even, I mean, gets smaller and smaller, right? As you uh, take larger and larger values of x, right? So what I'm saying is that like the denominator in this particular case just gets a lot bigger than the numerator. So the overall fraction becomes really, really small. Is that making sense? Uh, now there are other cases, like for example, I could give you something like this. Uh, and we're about to analyze all of this uh, in a second. Okay, so this is more interesting, right? Um, because, so what's happening here? Now I'm taking, um, well, in fact, I can, I don't need the, the two here. It's just like um, aesthetic, for aesthetic purposes. I don't really need it. So now I, I kept the numerator the same compared to the previous example. I'm leaving it as X, but I'm now taking the square root of the denominator, right? So what's happening here? So, the part, the thing is like, um, um, so when you take the square root, right, of x squared plus one, uh, let's say you're looking at x, oops, yeah. Now, again, like if you were to analyze the limit as x approaches infinity, you are supposed to, to take really, really large values of x, right? So if you look at this graph, it kind of looks like uh, that the graph kind of basically, it's almost indistinguishable at, at some point from uh, the line y equals one, right? So we want to say something like that the limit as x approaches infinity of this graph is one, right? Because here's the number one, if you think, if you see it. Uh, and like, in a sense, what's happened, like the reason why this should work uh, is that, you know, when you take the square root of x squared plus one, since x squared is getting so large, that square root is more or less the same as taking the square root of x squared. But when you take the square root of x squared, right, that's just x, and so x cancels x, and that's why you're getting one roughly here, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm about to write this all of this more precisely, but what I'm trying to say is that um, that's more or less um, what happens in this situation. So like taking the square root almost in a sense cancels out the square, so you get to get x over x, which is one, okay? so. So th those are just two examples to give you like an, an intuition for what's going on. So let me, um, and in many of these cases, um, yeah, it's kind of like by, you kind of think about what's supposed to happen and that's kind of you, how did you discover the, the limit? But. Okay, so what does it mean 
what do I mean by this? Let me try as, uh, as so this is how this is written. So it's not, uh, there's like the symbol that is used to say that X is taking larger and larger values, it's uh, infinity, which is like, uh, maybe this is a symbol you have seen before. Okay, so this is a symbol for infinity. Okay, I'm trying. I'm drawing it like kind of like a and and the number eight that you just uh, rotate, but it's like I mean slightly different. Um, let me see. Let me just check to make sure whether the book calls it plus infinity or just plus infinity. Oh yeah, okay, we're fine. Okay, so this means how, what this means is you, um, how is the function, function behaving as you take values of x, which grow indefinitely. So X gets larger and larger. So for example, um, the limit as um this is the one i, I mentioned um a, a second ago the limit as x approaches infinity of x over x squared plus one should be zero Uh, the polynomial on the denominator becomes a lot bigger. On the numerator. Is that making sense? In fact, if you want, uh, just to give you a, um, a heads up, um, that kind of always happens uh, in general. So as, so in fact, Oh, before giving you that, uh, just to, which I haven't said, um, this limit that I wrote writing here, it is uh, one where you're taking X to be bigger and bigger in along the positive X axis. There's a similar limit you can write, which is called the limit as X approaches minus infinity. So this is how f of x behaves as um, x takes values which are um, smaller and small, I mean, it's always confusing to say this, uh, which are getting like, um, smaller, I mean, which are getting more negative or smaller and smaller. By that, I just mean that you're moving 
to the left along the x-axis. So for example, like you're choosing x negative 10, x equals negative 100, x equals negative 1000, x equals negative 10,000, things like that. So if you look at this sequence of numbers, each one is to the left of the previous one uh, along the number line. So in that sense, you're kind of moving towards uh, minus infinity. So for example, Yeah, this is also zero. Since the denominator gets um, very small. So what I mean in this, if you can do this more like with a table, if you want to be more concrete, so what I'm saying is that imagine like you have x and you have one over x plus three. So if you choose x to be negative one ten, you have one over um what uh, negative seven. If you choose x to be negative one hundred, you have one over um yeah minus ninety seven, right? Is that making sense? So you, if you look at all these numbers, I may, let me put the minus in, outside of the denominator, just put it like here. If you look at all these numbers, they're always like minus, they are, will become like minus 0 point something, minus 0 point zero zero something, minus 0 point zero 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 something. So, so you're getting closer and closer to zero um with negative values is that making sense so that's why we're why would you would say that this limit is zero uh yeah sure uh like here or is, is scroll up more Okay, let's see, let, uh, let me give you also a chance to copy this. Is that making sense? Questions about this up to this point? Okay, so there are a couple of rules that you can use. Um, and this is kind of how you find the limits in general. So uh, how to find these limits at infinity in general. Let me give you like the script. At plus or minus infinity, they, uh, both uh, work. For uh for rate for for fractions involving polynomials. So the idea is to factorize. So you factorize. the highest power of x in the numerator 
and the highest power of x in the denominator. Okay, so let me uh, give you some examples uh, so that you can see what I mean here. Um, Okay, so let's say you wanted to understand this limit. And I'll put a uh, two in front of X. So in this limit, um, everyone, had a chance to copy it. What's the highest power of X in the numerator? Right, it, it's X to the one, right? So X is the highest power that appears and in the denominator, what's the highest power of X that appears? Right, it's x squared or x to the two, perfect. So the idea that you have to do here is to fact, like, so So for example, when we look at the numerator, right, when we look at the numerator, we want to factorize the highest power. The highest power is, power is x. So we want to factor out an x from each term here. But that looks a little bit odd because there's no x uh, in this side, right? So how can you factorize it? So the trick, let me see if I will, I'll keep working with blue. So the trick is that you kind of insert it by force. So, right, since this three, since this three had no act, you kind of put it by hand but you have to undo the fact that you put it by hand. So you have to divide by X again, so that like you're not changing the expression. Is that making sense what I just did? So like the effect of doing that is that now every term in the, in the, in the numerator has a power of X. Is that okay? And let's think about this one. So in this one, I want every term to have an X squared because of the highest power. Well, the first one already has an X squared. 
there's nothing to do there. What do I need for the one in the middle to get an export? Yeah, you have to, you need an, we need an, we're, uh, we're missing an X, so I, I put it here, but you, again, you cannot just create out of nowhere uh, powers of X, so you have to undo it, right? And what should I do, multiply and divide by uh, here in the last one? By x squared, right? So, because that, I mean, that's what we're missing if you want to get to x squared. But again, you're not allowed to just to do that freely. You have to divide by it as well. Is that making sense? So uh, you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. So now everything has an X in the numerator. So let me factorize it. And in the, inside the square root, right, now everything has an x squared. So let me factorize that one as well. Is that making sense? Any questions up to this point? And so what, what would you say, like, uh, what do you think happens next? We want, actually, we can do some cancellation, right? Is it clear what you can cancel? What will you cancel now? Uh, yeah, um, if you want, like we can do an extra step when you we just pull out the X squared from the square root, maybe that's more clear. So now these two cancel. Is that making sense? And what would you, okay, why is this convenient? Because in principle, it should be easier to understand what's happened with each term individually once you write it this way. So this doesn't depend on X, so this should re just remain two, right? But what happens with three over X? What happens with this as you make X really, 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 really big? What happens with the entire, fra with the entire fraction? It gets really small. Right, so it should go closer to zero, perfect. So this should be 
start becoming like zero, uh, you can put like this wiggle squiggle room wiggly thing to say, oh, this is behaving like zero. But something like that happens here as well, right? This is behaving like zero, and this is also behaving like zero, right? So in the limit, this should actually be two over root of one, which is two. So we would like to say that the limit as x approaches infinity of this expression is two. Is that making sense? Any questions about this one? So in fact, uh, let me show you this on GeoGebra for a second. Um, so I'm just going to quick quickly change to GeoGebra. So, um, so the function that I was giving you here was f of x, which is 2x plus 3 divided by the square root of x squared plus x plus 1. You see it here? So this is the function. And you see, like it may do its own thing at the beginning. But the idea of a limit at, at infinity is that kind of it approaches like a fixed behavior. OK. So uh, here you can write like y equals two. Um, so what this is saying is that this is getting closer and closer to the line y equals two. Okay. Is that making sense? Share. Let me share this. Oops. Okay, let's do one more example and then we'll move to the quiz. So I'll, I'll give you a second to think about this one first. Let me write it down and then we'll. Uh, it's, Let me see which one I want you to do. And we'll talk about the others uh, next time, uh, next week. So let's say, I, I, here's one for you to think about first. Um, I mean, yeah, take one or two minutes. Let's take two minutes to for you to think about this one and then we'll I'll come back and we'll discuss it and then we'll do the quiz. So yeah. Uh so what did you find? What 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 is the limit in this case? Should just be three. Good. Uh it like again, you should apply the same principle. So we want to factorize an x on each one because x is the highest power. So it's in fact a little bit easier than the previous one. So you put like x over x here. And then you put uh, x minus five, x over x here. And this is limit as x goes to infinity. Uh, uh, you get an x, so you get three plus two over x divided by x times one minus five over x. So the x's cancel. And again, uh, hopefully this is more clear that this is like zero and this is like zero as x goes to infinity. So you just get three over one, which is three. Is, is that okay?
मैंने क्वेश्चन सवाल दे Okay, so there are other couple variations that I still have to mention to you, but we'll do that next week. Um, I made available an ass a new assignment on my lab, which is related to these problems, um, and also the one-sided limit problems. Some of those, I mean, there, on these assignments, there's still some questions that involve trigonometric functions like sine and cosine. We haven't talked about those, so you can ignore them for now. And then on Monday, I'll tell you more. I'll do like a review of like some basic trick stuff so that we can keep on going. But yeah, I'll send an announcement detailing that. So of the uh, that's why I made the assignments due until next week so that you, you don't have to work on, on those trick problems yet. Um, so yeah, just on the assignments, you'll do the ones that like look similar to to what we were practicing today. But not every problem you'll be able to to solve yet. Um, that's what I'm trying to say. So just to show you how the the quiz is going to look like, uh, let's go to Canvas. Um, okay, let's see. So yeah, so basically it may look slightly different from your end, but there's this quiz one, I'm about to make it available. Um, so you should log in into this quiz. That's where you'll see the limit problems. There are only three problems. They're kind of fast. So I don't expect you to, to take 20 minutes, but um, you have 20 minutes to finish it. Okay, it is with Responder. So that always takes a little bit of time to get it uh, running. Um, so um, that would be the quiz. And once you're finished with the quiz and you log, log off responders. There's this second assignment called Upload Quiz 1, and that's where you will upload um, your solutions to, to the problems. Um, so, I mean, uh, I preferably try to just do it like as a PDF. I think all the limits may fit into just like a single piece of paper. Uh, so I don't think the upload should be too long, but uh, you can, I'm giving you 15 minutes after you finish the quiz so that, because that's a rough, the, about the same time that you have on the exam. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, so as I said, I don't, for, for the quiz, I don't mind if you do it on your tablet, that's fine. But for the exam, it will have to be on paper so you can get used to it. But for quizzes, it's fine if you want to do it on an iPad. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind too much about that. Uh, but yeah, for the exam, just be aware that I do will ask you to do it on, on, on paper, just in case. Is that making sense? Are the instructions clear? I mean, if something comes up, uh, you can email me. I'll be like, you know, I'll be around. Um, so you, you should know. And then around three, I'll log in again into our Canvas Zoom session for office hours if someone needs to ask me something. But yeah, I think the quiz should be relatively straightforward. So hopefully it will go well. But yeah, you can log, feel free. I'll make, yeah, I'll publish these assignments. So now you should be able to see them on Canvas and you can log off uh, of our meeting to, to start working on it if you want. Okay, so I'll see you. If not, I'll see you um, next Monday if you don't want to come up to office hours. So have a good weekend, yes.